E. M. Forster wrote A Room with a View, which was published in 1908 and tells the story of a young lady living in the constrained society of Edwardian period England. A young English lady named Lucy Honeychurch is spending her holiday in Italy with her cousin Charlotte Bartlett in a pension that caters to tourists from the United Kingdom. They are in Florence at the moment. Lucy and Charlotte are mid complaint about the lackluster scenery outside their windows when they are approached by a third visitor, an elderly gentleman by the name of Emerson. Mr. Emerson suggests that they switch rooms since he and his son George are staying in accommodations that have breathtaking views of Florence. Charlotte does not give in because she believes that if she accepted such an offer, it would put her in his debt, and that would be a gross violation of proper etiquette. But later that evening, via the mediation of another visitor, a minister by the name of Mr. Beebe, Charlotte agrees to take up the offer. During their stay in Florence, Lucy continues to have encounters with the odd Emerson family. Lucy likes them despite the fact that, according to the elitist standards of the other guests, they are socially undesirable. Lucy is out strolling by herself in Florence when she comes upon the scene of a murder one day. She passes out and George, who just so happens to be there, is the one who catches her. As they make their way back to their house, they carry on a peculiar and personal discussion while strolling down the river. But since George causes Lucy to experience sentiments that she is not prepared to deal with, she makes the decision that she will never see him again. Later on during that week, though, they find themselves on a carriage trip together into the hills outside of Florence. Lucy finds herself to be on her own as the other British visitors scatter and go their own ways among the hills. She finds herself face to face with George when she accidentally comes across a dirt terrace that is covered with violets. He begins to kiss her, but Charlotte breaks off the kiss. The next day, following Charlotte's instructions, both Lucy and Charlotte board a flight to Rome. After a few more months have passed, we make our way back to Windy Corner, the house of the Honeychurch family in Surrey, England. When Lucy was in Rome, she was often seen in the company of a guy called Cecil Vise. The Honeychurches and the Vises get along well, although Cecil and Lucy only had a passing acquaintance before their trip to Italy. While in Italy, Cecil made two separate marriage proposals to Lucy. Both times, she did not accept his advances. But when Cecil makes a third attempt proposal, she agrees. After becoming engaged, it is important for Cecil and Lucy to spend time interacting with Lucy's many neighbours. Cecil, a wealthy Londoner, despises the customs of the aristocracy in the countryside. In addition to this, he has a strong aversion to Lucy's brother Freddie and does not really like Lucy's mother, which Lucy continues to tolerate. She has kept quiet about her kiss with George at Charlotte's request and has never revealed it to anybody. However, the Emerson family moves into Sissy Villa, which is a residence located not too far from Windy Corner. Lucy is put in the position of having to confront George Emerson once again, but she is able to do so while maintaining her distance. Even if there are indications that she is experiencing anxiety about the marriage on a profoundly psychological level, she has not broken off her engagement to Cecil. Things are about to reach a turning point when Charlotte's boiler breaks down, forcing her to come stay as a guest at Windy Corner and during her visit, George is invited to play tennis by Freddie, who has become friends with him. On Sunday, when everything is scheduled to go down, Lucy is dreading the prospect of what may happen. Cecil annoys everyone on Sunday by reading aloud from a subpar British book and refusing to play tennis. Lucy quickly discovers that Miss Lavish, a guest at their Florence pension, is the author of the book. 
She does not find the section that Cecil is reading aloud to be hilarious. It is a fictitious reenactment of her kiss with George. Although the names are different, the circumstances are unmistakably the same. She is now aware that Charlotte has shared what took place with Miss Lavish, and now even George is hearing the passage being read. While walking back to the home, George sees Lucy standing by herself in the garden and decides to give her another kiss. Lucy confronts Charlotte in a furious manner about her inappropriate behavior. She had made up her mind to show George who's boss. She calls Charlotte in as a witness and makes her sit by her side while she tells George he must never set foot in Windy Corner again. George engages in an animated debate with her. He tries to persuade her that her relationship with Cecil is suffocating and inappropriate for her, and that Cecil would never love her enough to want her to have her own independence. She is loved by George for who she is. Lucy is frightened by his statements, yet she maintains her composure throughout the ordeal and George goes his own way, brokenhearted. Later that night, though, Cecil once again declines Freddie's invitation to play tennis. Lucy sees him more honestly after his rejection, and during the exact same night, she calls off the engagement. However, Lucy continues to be unable to acknowledge her love for George to anybody, even herself. She makes up her mind that she will go to Greece rather than staying in Windy Corner and confronting George. But on one particular day, she accompanies her mother and Charlotte to church, and while there, she encounters Mr. Emerson in the minister's study. Mr. Emerson is unaware that Lucy has called off the engagement. Nonetheless, Lucy quickly recognizes that she is unable to lie to Mr. Emerson and that she must tell the truth. As a result of their conversation, Mr. Emerson understands that she has profound affections for George. At last, she acknowledges that she has been denying her feelings for George the whole time. The last scene of the book takes place in Florence, where George and Lucy have traveled for their honeymoon. Lucy and George had run away together because she did not have her mother's permission. Her family life is challenging, but there is reason to believe that things will get better in the future. No matter what the future holds, George and Lucy will always have each other, and their life together is sure to be filled with love and happiness. If you have any suggestion of which book I should summarize, please let me know in the comments, and if you enjoyed this, please like and subscribe.